Oh, good afternoon YouTube it Looks like it's trying to rain <sighs> So it's it's kind of uh, a day I wouldn't have brought the Harley out anyway Because we've had rain on and off all day really I was uh, watching the Missenden Flyer earlier and uh, I'll put a link to his vlog, he's doing a tour in Scotland at the moment on his BMW but uh, yeah, he's quite good him and some decent views as well I quite enjoyed that I might go up there for a ride myself sometime but, uh, He's on a BMW 1200 GS, I think it is. There's an interesting story Lee Iacocca tells about uh, the German and Japanese motorcycle industry and Lee Iacocca was the guy that was the CEO of uh, Ford he got sacked by Henry Ford and uh, the people that owned Chrysler asked him to come and turn Chrysler around and save it for America for the jobs really and he, he wrote a book about it which I read but uh, At the end of the Second World War, there was a problem uh, both in Germany and Japan about uh, what the people that lived there could do for a living. I mean, we had the Munich airlift, which was basically carrying food supplies into the population. Otherwise, like lots of lots of people would have starved, literally people like Sir John Harvey Jones were over there and they were uh, stripping the place out you know every everything industrial right down to the railway tracks so that they could no longer produce uh, war materials and munitions and things like that and uh, so then came the problem well what do these people do for jobs you know how do they feed themselves so in their wisdom, they said, uh, well, let them build motorbikes. And of course they did the same in Japan as well. Now, I think it was in Japan that they sent a bloke called Professor Alan Deming over there to teach them about the importance of quality control, which, uh, you know, whatever else you say about the Japanese, they make good stuff nowadays, machines. Presumably they did a similar thing in Germany and, and added on to that if you strip out a, a nation's industrial brace and then replace it with state-of-the-art machinery then obviously that's going to have a competitive advantage over other nations who don't uh, do that Anyway, back to Lee Iacocca, he, uh, he was watching all these sales drop off at Chrysler and uh, he decided to get, he asked a bloke or a few people why, why they weren't buying American anymore and they said well it's not reliable, the gearbox keeps failing and this that and the other you know so they got the Japanese to uh, manufacture some gearboxes for them and these things just ran and ran and they didn't fail at all and when they stripped them down to find out why 
they hadn't been built to the exact tolerances on the uh, American drawings they'd actually done them a lot better than that, a lot finer tolerances so when they asked the Japanese, well why did you do that they said, well, you know, because we could because of course they had all the latest machines and what have you and they could produce stuff to a higher standard so they did and then uh, that's when uh, Iacocca realised, you know, that they had a, a battle on, really, to save the American car industry. And now if you look at the motorbikes, the, the Germans and the Japanese probably make the best motorbikes by some distance. And... Uh, So it goes back to this uh, sort of Marshall Plan at the end of the Second World War. Yeah. Rain or not, I just wanted to uh, come out and have a quick look if I can find where they've stuck this plaque this memorial plaque for this uh, 1643 battle I don't know what that was but I think he's dead now Looked like a wasp this is quite a steep hill we're back at Hopton looking at this battle of Hopton East and I had a I read into it a bit and uh, turns out the RAF have kind of plundered most of the battlefield and since moved out so there's a disused uh, or maybe still used uh, bits of the MOD yeah we'll go down this way yeah. so we didn't we went up that way last time That's a little church. It's quite an old one. Yeah, you got enough road. <laughs> Sorry to get in your way, mate. <laughs> There's a few properties out here for sale. I'm not too surprised because although these places are picturesque and what have you in the summer, in the winter when all this is icy and what have you I'm guessing it can be a bit of fun Battle Ridge We'll just have a look around here. Let's just see what we can see down here. If anything, probably nothing at all. Now it's just houses. Okay. So that'll be why they call it Battle Ridge. Oh, yeah. Right, YouTube. Just so I can get you some pictures of that. 
And I'm guessing that this might be where the... Uh, the parliamentary... Uh, forces assembled on this side here. Come on, Peter. So... Obviously not in that chap's conservatory because it wasn't there then, but I just have a quick scan around. You can see there's a good view. And even in those days, uh, the military would try and get the high ground if they could. So that's really all we can see. You can see the rain over there. I've got a little map at home, I'll try and put that in and we'll see if we can find this. This is Opton. Radio YouTube. <laughs> Come on then. Come on, let's land it. Cromwell close. So, the builders have had a bit of a nod to uh, history, haven't they? better. Now, that was a branch yesterday. Right. So, it says there's a monument here, YouTube. Let's have a look. Well, not as you can see, is there? So, a bit of a con. Unless they've stuck it down here somewhere. So that's where the battlefield was. I'll show you the map. And uh, this is Opton East. And the MOD basically just took the land. I can't see no monument. Yeah. Two saints away. I can't see that far down there. So, I can't see no monument. scrub that except to say that the battle took place over there really or most of it stick a signpost saying monument don't give people any idea of how far away it is where it is <laughs> and just expect them to uh, Go and find it, I suppose. 
not very good. There we go. Oh, busy old Hobson, eh? Oh baby, you're getting wet. Right. The main part of the battle took place sort of over here. This road's recently been resurfaced, so I'm going to take it real steady. And the guy behind me is not going to be happy because it's a 60 mile an hour road. But new tyres, resurfaced road. I don't have a choice really, I've got to take it pretty steady we're psychic it's all right you don't need signals right there you go YouTube more rain Anyway, cheers. Bye for now. 278 miles. Good.